Hey, what's up? This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be recreating 5050s Cupid and sharing music production tips and techniques along the way. And if you watch to the end, I'm also going to be sharing a cool, unique technique that has caused this song to go viral all over social media. So let's dive right in. Let me play you my recreated version and then walk you step by step through the production process. So let's focus in on the drums. Now, the overall drum rhythm itself is pretty straightforward. So let me solo the drum bus. I've actually pulled these drums, both the sounds, the actual part and the programming, all from an earlier session that I've done on this channel, specifically from Doja Cat's Say So. As you might browse through this YouTube channel, you'll come across many other videos and oftentimes, some drum grooves might overlap in case that this Say So remake was pretty much right in the same lane. So I figured why not just use those drums, drag them into this session. That way I have a decent place to start from and I can build off of that. And to do that in Ableton Live, you can just import or drag and drop previous sessions that you've might've worked on. And this is a good strategy to have. And sometimes what I like to do is I keep a folder in my browser window here with ideas and maybe sessions that, you know, had a great vibe to it with, or maybe certain effects or certain automation that I might always want to return to. I can keep that here in my browser window and simply open up the actual session and find any specific sound or uh, track that I want to incorporate into uh, this current session. So when I wanted the drums, I can just grab this, drag and drop them into the session and that will go ahead and place the drums as well as any plugins that are associated with the soundscape for those drums. So I did that and that's the drums that we have here. Basically it didn't change anything. So let me walk you through what we have. We have a drum rack here loaded with our kick and snare. And then we have our loop right after that. Now why the loop? Well. I oftentimes like to layer my foreground beat, which is I'm gonna call my kick, hi-hat, and snare. I like to oftentimes layer that with a loop because it adds some of the texture and nuances that um, tend to help glue my drums all together. But if you notice, I have a gate plugin on this drum loop as well as an EQ, so I'm gonna bypass that. And the loop itself has a bit of a tail in on the actual snare drum or that clap. So you got a lot of that reverb in there. So I'm using the gate here to actually eliminate a lot of that reverb presence in the loop. Real quick, we'll get right back to the lesson, but I just wanna give you the heads up that I have a free VST plugin for you. It's an instrument that I created called Orbit. It has amazing pad sounds and drones that you can use to add some nice textures and layers to your productions. And the best part is it's yours absolutely free. Just click the link below in the description box to download or visit beatacademy.com slash orbit. Now let's get back to the lesson. And basically the way this gate is going to work and operate is this blue line indicates the threshold. So once audio passes that threshold, that audio is heard. If the audio doesn't pass that threshold, well, you just don't hear it. So I wanna kind of place the threshold loud, uh, at a point where I can hear the kick and the clap, but not necessarily any of the reverb between those two items. And then an EQ to just wipe away some of the low end from the kick so that all the attention of my kick drum is a little bit more in the spotlight. With a loop, it adds that little bit of texture and those subtleties go a long way. So I'm gonna then group that loop and that drum rack into a drum bus. And then I'm using the UAD uh, Fairchild 660. And this is really just to add some saturation. You can see the input gains all the way at zero, but I'm barely doing any compression because I'm dialing that in and I'm bringing the threshold back just a little bit. And I'm also balancing out the output as well. So I'm 
um, giving it some gain. And this adds a nice saturation and just overall color and warmth to the drums. And just a little bit of EQing here, just to bump up the low end, scoop out the mids and brighten up the drums. Now for the bass, I'm using IK Multimedia's Moto Bass. This is Moto Bass 1. I know there's Moto Bass 2 out there. Haven't upgraded yet, but plan to soon. And I'm using the modern J Bass model and change the play style to put the muting about 46%. And with the strings, I've changed it over to flat wound. And an EQ to just shape the overall tone. And some saturation here by the soft tube saturation knob. And the purple audio 1176 compressor, just to give a little bit more of dynamic control. Now, as I listen to the reference, I can hear some keys and specifically some roads being played. So I went with Arturius Stage 73 went with the standard default preset that it loads with, I think it's called Jazz Time, and let's take a listen. And so I'm copying that same part underneath that, I just dragged and copied that same uh, part for the keys right here for the organ. I'm also using Arturia's B3 organ, and for this, I kind of had to cycle through some presets to find the progressive rock standard to get the tone that I hear in the reference. And I got some chorus on there as well, just to blur and, and widen it up a little bit. Now, this texture here with the organ and the roads, just a great texture. I love having organs tucked away in the back because they just do a great job of kind of gluing the instrumentation together. Now to give a little bit more of uh, some space and almost like an ethereal pad uh, texture to this, I went ahead and layered it with the Beat Academy Orbit plugin for some really cool pads here. So let me solo this. And I'm using the Horizons patch, the patch that just comes loaded with this. And if I go ahead and layer that with the organ and the stage three, uh, the stage 73. By the way, this plugin is absolutely yours for free. Just click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com slash orbit to access this uh, plugin. Now, during the chorus section of the song, we hear some really nice chimey type of keys going on as a call and response part. And so for this, I'm gonna be recreating it using Vital. It's a free VST plugin that you can download and use so that you may be able to follow along if you're not using Ableton Live as your primary DAW. So with that shimmer and that brilliance, my first oscillator, my first go-to choice for the waveform is going to be a sawtooth. So I have oscillator one set to our sawtooth here. And we're gonna create just about three voices of unison, but just barely, just barely just detuning it. Now we're gonna turn oscillator two on, and that's going to be staying at a sine wave. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some frequency modulation, some FM synthesis. So what I'm gonna do is click this knob over here underneath where it says phase, and we're gonna select FM uh, from oscillator one. Or yeah, FM oscillator one. We're gonna select that, and we're gonna slowly just turn the wave morph here. You can hear how it gets more um, fragmented. It feels more of like chimey and belly when we do that. And that was the purpose behind me doing this FM. That's why I'm doing that. I wanna frequency modulate from oscillator two uh, from the sine wave. So this is changing the actual, uh, it's morphing the waveform itself. And that's what's giving it that nice brittle shine that we hear. And then we have the sample section turned on with a little bit of white noise, just a little bit of that to give some air and texture. And we go over here to the effects section 
And this is where a lot of the soundscape is taking place. So we've got some chorus here. I've got a little bit of delay and I'm using the EQ to just take away all the low end, make this really bright in the mid and high mids. And some reverb to create some space. Now it's important too, is that envelope one is shaped correctly. So I wanna bring the sustain down because by default you have the sustain up and it's gonna hold those chords on a little too long. So we'll bring the sustain down and bring the release up and lower the decay. Shape it to your own liking, to your own taste, but essentially now we've got these cool little um, shimmery type of chords happening over here. All right, next let's add this arpeggiated riff that we can hear happening in the background. It's a really cool way of adding some movement to all the instrumentation. So for this, I'm also gonna be using Vital so that you can follow along if you're not using Ableton Live. And we're starting off with just a oscillator one set to a sine wave. And I'm going to turn on oscillator two with a sawtooth. And that's set to a whole octave lower than oscillator one is. So that gives a little bit more of that presence. Now, what's creating the pluckiness that we can hear is that I'm going to map envelope two. I'm just gonna click, drag that over to our filter one, which is controlling both oscillators one and two. So I mapped oscillator one and two over to filter one. And then we just brought the cutoff down and in envelope two, we're just going to lower the decay, bring the sustain all the way down and a little bit of that release. And that's what snaps the filter from opening up quickly, but yet then closing back quickly as well. So if you shorten the decay, you get more of that plucky type of response. So I found a good spot to be right here. And I have oscillator two set to three voice unison, but at 1%. And the effects, we have some chorus going on. And then a delay set to every 16th note with the mix really low. Now the arpeggiating uh, is happening through Ableton Live's arpeggiator plugin. I went over here to my MIDI effects, chose the arpeggiator and dragged and dropped that down and it ends up before the VST plugin. And so we have it set to every eighth note, it's set to up as the style, and then just moving the gate around here so that when I dragged and dropped the actual chords that are being played by the organ and the roads, I simply just brought them in down here. And since we have the arpeggiator on, it's going to arpeggiate and play the intervals between each of the notes. And then after that, we have just a little bit of white noise happening on that downbeat, and it's being mirrored by a crash cymbal as well there, just to accent that moment in the chorus uh, where all the instruments come in after the lead vocal. So that covers the reproduction, but I wanna share with you a technique that has helped this song go completely viral on a lot of social media platforms. And that is creating a sped up version. So what I'm gonna do is create an empty audio track. That's Command T. And here we have this audio track. Let's set the input to resampling. So right now it's set to external in. We're gonna choose resampling. And resampling basically means that this will be able to record anything that we're currently hearing in our current session. So if I solo just the drums, you can see here that the drums uh, will be recorded. So I want the whole song to play. So we'll just keep it right here so that all the tracks are being played and we're essentially just resampling our session. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll hit record.
So once I've actually resampled the whole session, I'm going to unwarp this and I'm going to pitch this up. So let's try going up three semitones and that's going to speed up the whole resampled audio. So obviously there's so many cool things you can do once you've already resampled it. Pitch it down, pitch it up. Uh, we can leave it back in the warp method here and you could set it to re-pitch here as well so that when you change the tempo of your session, it will re-pitch the sampled audio to fit the current project's tempo. So we're at 120 BPMs. So if we were to speed this up to say 145, So we're essentially taking this over from 120 to 148, and that's more or less pitching it up and down. That's what the repitch algorithm does. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and encouraging in any way, and you were able to pick up a tip or two that you can use in your music production. As I mentioned earlier before in this video, I have a gift to you that I'd love to send you. It's this VST plugin that I've even used in the recreation of this video called Orbit. It's a plugin that I created and it's VSC3 and audio unit compatible. So you can download this and use it in your DAW today. Simply click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com slash orbit to download this plugin, as well as a bunch of amazing other goodies that I've put together for you to take your next step forward with producing your music. And also I just wanna remind you, if you're looking for professional guidance and mentorship and helping you produce the music you wanna produce, well, then I want to direct your attention over to BeatAcademy.com, where I have plenty of resources and opportunities to experience just that. Well, be sure to like and subscribe to this video so you can stay up to date with upcoming videos. And let me know in the comment section what songs you would like me to recreate in the upcoming video, as well as topics you would like me to help and talk about to help you move forward with producing your music. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.